Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Glad you joined us. Today, we're going to talk about the dart gun. We're going to talk about some of the things that we do with BQA and safety and all the different things because the dart guns are here to stay. They're a good tool, but we got to use them right. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with AML and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one-two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and I'm here at Kansas State University where I serve as the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Epidemiology and I've been very fortunate to be able to spend time with you all on Doc Talk for the last six, seven, eight years and we appreciate all that y'all do to, to help us keep going and keep bringing news and information to you about the beef industry, the equine industry, and, and some of the other things associated with veterinary medicine. Today we're going to talk about the dart gun. And the one thing about the dart gun is that this is not something that's new. It used to be that we only had these dart guns for tranquilizing animals. And, and then it parlayed into, you know, the ability to treat animals out on the ranch or open range. and I think it was estimated at probably 70% of the producers that have outside cattle or cattle on wheat pasture or, or on grass traps are utilizing some sort of remote uh, doctoring system. I don't know what the actual, I'm sure there's an actual acronym for it and I'll get an email from somebody, which would be great. I need to be educated. Um, but the, the thing I wanted to focus on today is, is why do we use them? And I think the number one reason why we use them is for, for animal welfare and for human safety. And when I started thinking about it, the first thing, my first gut reaction to the dart gun was probably wrong because I was only focused on, on beef quality assurance and I was only focused on, on um, some of the things that are associated with, with this, the judicial use of antibiotics. So we have to have a balance here. The balance is if we want to keep using these tools, for human safety and for treating animals out on the range and, and ease of, of welfare on those animals, we have to use them appropriately. We have to use them within the BQA guidelines and we have to use the antibiotics in a judicious manner. So what kind of accelerated some of the dart gun, darting uh, guns over the last couple of years? Well, I think the veterinary feed directive, when we then started looking at not being able to use CTC in, in range cubes or not being able to use it as a free, in our free choice mineral to control pink eye or to control foot rot, we then had to move to the parental treatments and, and some of the drugs that are approved. And always work with your local veterinarian for the, the antibiotics that are approved to be utilized for foot rot, for pink eye, for respiratory disease in cattle and different things to that measure. There are a lot of different antibiotics and different dart sizes that, that fit, that can be utilized, but we have to make sure that the ones that we're using 
are labeled for cattle, that we're using them at the right doses, and that we're, we're not causing tissue damage. So what we're gonna talk a little bit about today is some of the things you need to do in steps with your dart gun, and if you're gonna use these types of darting systems so that we can make sure that we continue to produce a safe, wholesome beef supply. This is, a, this is a touchy subject for a lot of people because there has been both positive and negative uh, ideas associated with the use of dart guns. I think that they have a very good place in our industry, but we have to use them correctly. When we come back to Doc Talk, we're going to start talking about some of those issues. Thanks for joining us. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining us for our Cattle First Minute as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. And today we're gonna to talk about identifying sick cattle. And the first thing I look for in identifying sick cattle is cattle that, that aren't eating. So we're gonna look for slab-sided or gant cattle. And, and sick cattle don't eat and cattle that don't eat get sick. The next thing I'll look at is depression. Is the animal depressed? Does it have a dull, listless appearance? Does it try to just kind of snake away from me? Um, and, and so if calf that's not coming to the bunk, one that's got a dull appearance, depressed appearance, those are gonna be my two big clinical signs to get those calves out of the pen. And, and so the DART method, depression, anorexia, respiratory rate, limp, and other things that will show you signs that cattle are sick or that cattle need to be helped. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here, and we're talking about dart guns. And the first thing we're going to talk about is when you purchase the, the dart gun, you need to know the first thing you need to consider is what type of animal because the darts come in different sizes and there's a 5cc dart and a 10cc dart that, that you can, can purchase and the bigger animals obviously need the bigger darts and the, the smaller animals need the, the smaller darts. And, and then the proximity um, of utilizing the, the dart gun. When we start to use the, the different charges, there are different colored charges depending on the strength and, and you don't want to pick out a charge that's too strong because if it's too strong, you have the ability then to shoot the dart at too much velocity and force to where it penetrates the hide deeper than the, the needle. But we want to pick out the needle size. We want to work with your veterinarian to get a prescription on what you're going to utilize uh, the darts for. So let's get with our veterinarian, let's get a valid veterinary client patient relationship. Let's talk about what we're going to use, which antibiotics we're going to use to treat what, whether it's pink eye, whether it's foot rot, whether it's respiratory disease or other, anaplasmosis. Um, and then we can then work with our veterinarian to pick out the right darts. Once we pick out the right darts and we know the, the case definition and we know our treatment protocols, you can then load the darts with the proper antibiotics. Okay. Understand the, the charges so that you don't have one that's the charge too hard so that when we do utilize the remote uh, treatment system that this, this uh, doesn't penetrate the hide. So get the right gun, get the right darts, get the right charges. 
The first thing I recommend that you do is that you use this gun to go out and practice. But you don't want to use it the first time on an animal. So what we'll do is, is even if you have, if, if we're at a feed yard or, or someplace, if we have a mortality, we'll actually use that carcass then to practice uh, utilizing this, the darting system. Um, if you don't, we've used things such as a burlap sack or, or things to that nature. Our main objective is to make sure that the sites that we're using are dialed in so that we hit the appropriate area on the animal when we shoot. And the second one is, is that we don't, aren't using charges that are too, too heavy to, to utilize. So we want to sight in the gun. We want to make sure that you understand how to use the gun. And actually on most of the manufacturers that produce these guns, once you purchase it, if you go on their website, there's actually a tutorial, a video tutorial that you can queue up on your computer, you can watch it so that you know how to use this uh, product and, and the gun safely for, for the people that are around you, that you use it effectively, that we make sure that we put the injections in the right location, and we make sure that we are delivering the drugs in these, these uh, darts that have a delayed uh, dispensing or delayed administration. They don't just hit the animal and explode into the, the carcass. There's actually a mechanism that gets started that, that slowly puts this in so that we make sure we get a subcutaneous injection. That's just kind of the start when you get one of these um, on the safety. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about judicious antibiotic use and making sure that, that we're using other things that improve the safety of these products when they're utilized in our industry. Did you know long range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? Your investment in the beef checkoff is opening new doors for beef today and tomorrow. Our commitment to long term planning helps ensure your profitability from one generation to the next. Hello, this is uh, Caleb Plyler, Plyler and Son Charlotte. This is my son, Hook, and my wife, Brianna. And we operate a uh, purebred Charlotte operation in Hope, Arkansas. You know, in the uh, business that we're in, the beef checkoff dollars are very important to us. A lot of that money is to educate people just like kids uh, that's in Hook's class, the importance of eating beef. You know, it's a high protein product that uh, it's a very important uh, part of our diet. Sometimes we get this uh, bad rap as uh, uh, beef is not, uh, you know, what we really need to be uh, doing from a dietary standpoint. But, uh, you know, being able to get to the kids and let them know that, you know, beef, it is what needs to be for dinner. You know, one of the, the bigger things with our family is uh, getting to go out and show off some of our cattle. Huck, he gets to show uh, a lot of heifers. Uh, a lot of what we do trying to uh, get him into showing is the fact that it's teaching him discipline, respect for the animals, and it's going to continue to uh, give him lifelong skills throughout his life. But I think it's very important that, uh, you know, the next generation understands how important uh, the beef industry is. Just like Huck here, we plan on him one day operating this farm. And, uh, you know, if, if we can do that, we're doing what we need to. Because, you know, this country is uh, founded upon people that, you know, have family traditions and, and do a really good job of keeping those traditions going. Huck, one day, what kind of cows do you want to gr grow up to have, you think? Charlays. Charlays, all right. You know, uh, if the beef checkoff dollars are going to really good causes and really promoting beef, then uh, the consumers are going to want to want to buy more beef, and, and that uh, leads for us making more money in the end, and uh, and it really helps the quality of people's cow herds because we're able to enhance our genetics even more. Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at synanthic.com. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help?
When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We're talking about using dart guns to administer antibiotics or other compounds for cattle. And we, we've talked about when you get the gun and gun mechanics and, and going on the website of the, of the manufacturer to get certified and understand the safety of, of handling the gun. Now let's talk a little bit about when we utilize this, this product. If we go to, to uh, Beef Quality Assurance and the Beef Quality Assurance website, there are some steps towards recommendations of using dart guns with Beef Quality Assurance guidelines. So when we think about Beef Quality Assurance, this is something that was, this is a program that was designed by veterinarians and producers for veterinarians and producers so that we would make sure that we produce a wholesome, safe, quality uh, beef product for our consumer. And it's centered around injection sites when we first, uh, well, antibiotic residues and injection sites. So when we utilize the dart guns, we need to continue to focus on understanding not leaving antibiotic residues. And there's two types of residues we don't want to leave, okay? The one residue is when you use this, we're using antibiotics just like we do in, in when we use a syringe. So you need to make sure that you record the animal, record when you gave the injection so that you know the proper withdrawal time uh, so that we don't send that animal to slaughter or to, to someplace with antibiotic residues on board. The second one is injection sites. And with darts, this comes with a little bit heightened awareness because if we're shooting them in the triangle zone, like we do when we recommend uh, the antibiotic use or antibiotic injection sites at a feed yard or on your cow-calf operation, um, we're going to be placing the dart in the neck area, or you're going to utilize and put this this uh, dart in the round of the animal. Now, when when I, I can see both ways, I can see where I don't want to shoot up next to the head. But I can also see that if I'm shooting the round and the animal, if I'm shooting from behind and, the, and I miss and the animal looks, that I could get just as many uh, detrimental shots uh, that go into the animal, in the areas of the animal I don't want it to go. So some of the places to stay away from, we don't want to shoot the animal, obviously, in the head, the eye, that. We also don't want to shoot the animal in the ribs because there's less tissue there. And then if you'd hit it just right, you can actually get, penetrate between the ribs. And if you do that, then it's you know, time to cancel Christmas. Um, but, but making sure that we put the injection site in the round or in the neck is important. Using the right charge is extremely important. One of the things that, that I want people to understand is that after we shoot the animal, the dart stays in for a moment and falls out about 10 to 15 minutes later. So I personally would like to see us pick those darts up out of the pasture so that someone's horse doesn't step on one, so that a cow doesn't step on one. But more importantly, if my kid's going fishing at your farm and they're running down there with the fishing pole in their hand, it'd be a pretty bad Sunday afternoon to trip, fall, and, and impale themselves with a dart. The last one, I'm getting calls from packers with pictures of these darts embedded in the round, embedded in the loin, and that with these guns are being misused. We need to make sure that we use the proper loads and that we don't leave a residue of a dart in these animals. Antibiotic residues, foreign bodies, they, they are both very detrimental to the future of this beef industry and we need to make sure that it doesn't occur. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy.
When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo for Merck Animal Health. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson. We're talking about the use of dart guns um, with treating animals out on the range uh, in open areas. And, and again, you know, whenever we start to, when we, when the VFD, when we, uh, obviously the VFD didn't make using CTC illegal, it increased the regulation of how we use CTC. It was already illegal to use CTC for foot rot and non-labeled products because we cannot use a feed additive in an extra label manner per FDA's regulations. What changed was now we have a regulation of the veterinarian, of the feed store, and the producer on how we utilize those products. So with that in mind, we have to treat more animals out in the pasture for, for things like foot rot and pink eye and anaplasmosis because we can't use the feed grade antibiotics at, at this point or they're, they're being regulated so we don't utilize them. I hope that FDA will loosen it to where veterinarians can write a, an extra label prescription for the feed grade antibiotics like they can for an injectable. Now that it's underneath the veterinary oversight, I don't see why they can't. Until then, we have to think about the safety of our people, the safety of the workers, and when we start to rope and drag animals to treat them for foot rot, it increases the stress on the animal and it increases the danger of the job. Now obviously there are people out there, you're sitting there saying, well, that's because you're at the university and sitting behind the desk and you aren't out there roping and dragging and, and that may be so and there are some people that are extremely talented at it. I just know that, that um, when I talk to people saying well I'm going to send my boy out to, to treat the bull for pink eye or things of that nature, it's a little bit easier and a little bit safer to utilize one of these remote systems to get the job done. Now we want to make sure that we clean these needles up out of pastures. We want to make sure that you have a veterinary client patient relationship and that you're using appropriate antibiotics. We want to make sure that we don't inject the animal, the dart, don't shoot the dart into the carcass. And if we do shoot the dart into the carcass, we need to notify the veterinarian and we need to notify the packer that those animals are going to go to. Don't just send it on to the feedlot. Don't just send it on to the to the packer. Let's communicate as an industry so that we can keep utilizing these types of, of tools and technologies. Um, the last one is, is that when I talk to people, they say that our cattle today coming into sale barns are getting wilder and wilder. And, and part of the reason I think it is, is because we have less and less interaction with our cattle on a daily basis. We have uh, bale, uh, bale racks and bale dispensers were going out. We cut the, the wrap off the bale and we unroll it uh, off our flatbed trucks. We have fence line bunks, so we pull up in the tractor with the mixer wagon and we unload the, the, that. And now, when an animal's sick, we're pulling up to the herd, rolling down our window and shooting a gun at him out the window. We're basically road hunting and there's a study done in Canada that showed the use of the dart guns improperly can actually make your herd almost undomesticated when they see you coming. So remember to always work with your local veterinarian. Talk to us if you need more information about dart guns and companies and things of that nature. You can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I appreciate all that you all do to help us with Doc Talk and continue to let us bring you uh, public service announcements like this one. 
Thanks for watching us today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one-two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.